welcome to the Villa Park podcast. And all I've got to say is Manchester United nil, Aston Villa one. So, as I said, welcome to a celebratory Villa Park podcast. Let's get the boys straight in. George, how you doing, mate? Hey, Rich. Yes, yeah, great, mate. How you doing, mate? Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, especially after Saturday. And Sam, how you doing, pal? Yeah, mate, I'm all good. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just thought I'd have to play that uh, play that crowd at the start because um, it was phenomenal being part of the, uh, the away uh, support on Saturday. So, yeah, just give a treat to everyone there. Uh, Everyone watching and listening, because uh, it was fantastic. Um, just again, before we get on with the show, um, we've got an action-packed show in store for you. We've got our Body More Bulletin. We've got the Man United Review. We've got um, Spurs Preview. Um, <clears throat> but obviously, we are on World of Sport TV. Um, we're on the road. We're very, very close to 600 uh, subscribers. So as always, please, if you like this video, if you like the content, Um, Please subscribe to the channel. There's loads of different sports on there. We had a fantastic Ryder Cup uh, um, watch-alongs across the weekend. We had, uh, there's a golf show, there's UFC, um, there's all different teams. Obviously, we're Villa, there's Man United, there's Newcastle, there's West Ham. So loads of content out there for everyone. So please make sure you're liking and subscribing. But as I say, this is the Villa Park podcast. So first up, we're going to talk Body More Bulletin. so, as always, I ask you two boys to um, talk, find a couple of little stories. Obviously, all the talk has been about Man United and more so how bad Man United have played, not necessarily how well Villa played, but just a couple of little stories that have gone under the radar um, at Villa Park um, that we can just spend a couple of minutes just uh, just chewing the fat over. So, Sam, you go first with yours, mate. Um, what, what have you uh, found in the world of Villa uh, this Hi. week? Nice to see I'm going first again. A normal order has been seen. <laughs> There's so much pressure for George last week. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things. Literally, whilst we were, we were watching the intro, I found something else which I thought would be quite fun to talk about. But um, the first thing, uh, you know me, I like to keep an eye on, on our players out on loan. And, uh, you know, uh, one of our, our loan players who actually did very well this week is uh, Brad Young, who's at Carlisle United scored uh, two goals to, to win the game for Carlisle yesterday. So um, it's nice to see him actually getting a, getting a chance and getting a game at Carlisle because I know he's on the bench for, um, you know, for his first few games of the season. And I think we saw it against uh, Liverpool last year for those, you know, obviously who, who remember that game. He looked very good. So it's good to see him playing, at, you know, at a good level and, and actually getting some goals. I think he's not one of the, you know, the big flashy names of our, of our youth. Um, set up at the moment so it's nice to see him doing well um, that was the first thing and the second thing I thought was quite was, was quite fun is um, John McGinn who we all know and love and and know for being extremely funny I've just read is uh, is going to be on uh, a question of sport on on TV so uh, that. yeah 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 so uh, apparently he's gone up to gone up to Manchester to film it um I think it's a new look question of sport not the one that I remember for with uh, Sue Barker for about 400 years was how I was <laughs> that. so um uh yeah, yeah uh John McGinn's going to be on a question of sport and uh, I for one definitely won't be missing that because he's uh he, he's hilarious isn't he 
Yeah, yeah. What day is it on again? Did you say Friday? Is it? Uh, I we'll have yeah, to have a look. It's Friday. Friday. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's Friday show. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. We'll get um get tuned in for that. Um, see the maybe old uh, be wearing his uh, head. Yeah, maybe he'll be wearing his big chicken costume that he was wearing at Christmas as well. <laughs> good stuff. Good <laughs> stuff. Good stuff. And uh, George, what about yourself? What have you found in the Villa world this last week? Um, yeah, I, I saw that we um the under twenty threes they played um played against Stoke in the week. Apparently, very good Stoke under twenty threes. Um, quite a few of them have been playing first team. I heard, and we yeah, absolutely demolished them. And one one eight nil. It was eight basically nil, yeah. ridiculous. We just literally, and all our players are full of. 17 18 year olds you know playing at under 23 level um everything christian perslow promised us seems to be you know it's coming in, coming to tuition isn't it i mean they uh bidet got a hat trick i think the two chuk, chuk Maweka brothers got two each it's just yeah it looks like it's just yeah. ready-made stars all over the pitch and um yeah I'm, I'm here for it mate i can't wait can't wait to see him come through yeah, I think Aaron think, Ramsey got one as well. Yeah, Ramsey yeah, well. I think, yeah, I think we might captain, have to call him the four. I think we might have to call him the four tops. Yeah, because yeah. never <laughs> might, <laughs> might have to christen them the four tops because they are just uh, unreal, aren't they? I think they're like, I mean, there's some phenomenal players in that in that team. There's there's great young players out on loan, like you mentioned, Brad Young, Arjun Reiki, another one. Obviously, Louis Barry's not getting um, not getting his minutes at Ipswich, but I mean, these four are just um, absolutely frightening. Yeah, yeah. I think even even, even uh, Lou Barry's Ipswich won six nil. Yes, um, yes. So won six nil at the weekend, and uh, yeah, I don't know if you boys managed to watch the uh, watch the Stoke game um, or even the highlights for the for the under twenty threes game against Stoke. Caught, but caught a little bit. Honestly, it was like watching you know men against boys, even though it was it was boys against boys. It was it was crazy. I think that the Chuck and Mecca brothers are just a not they shouldn't be playing at that level because it's just not fair that you know they're, they're, <laughs> it's not fair they like the, the stoke players are getting nothing out of it other than like feeling you know how it is to just get battered by by you know players who are much better than you so i don't know how much they're gaining from that but for us obviously it's you know it, it's good for them to go and build their confidence as well but i really think they need to be playing at sort of like a higher level um you know obviously they're trying to incorporate them into the into the first team this season but that level that under 23 level and like you say george at stoke under 23 is very highly rated and yeah they pissed it it's, it's absolutely not a competition for them and uh definitely one that that you know they don't really need to be playing in i saw um the, the facebook updates it was all from the stoke end and uh, it was like goal for villa goal for villa goal for villa and <laughs> the stoke fans were saying, can, can we stop updating the feed we don't, we don't want to know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure they're too good not, and it's not yeah. bad it's not a bad thing but they're just too good yeah yeah no but i mean for us it's uh it's fantastic and obviously we we've waxed lyrical about the youth setup and what's happening obviously you gave us a great insight last week sam in terms of how much uh investment and how much um time and sort of uh, focus that christian perslow and, and the whole team are putting on the young on the uh, academy and the young players and whether they whether they go on to play this in the first team or whether they go on to have careers elsewhere they're going to bring money in and, and sort of prestige to to aston villa so it's a it's a win-win situation so yeah we'll certainly keep our eye on and i think they'll certainly be favorites for that i think it's like the premier league division two um title at yeah. the moment in the 23s league so they'll certainly be favorites for that they have to be they have to be um so um let's uh let's get on to the uh the big game that was that was saturday and um i did a as i say i did a podcast a preview show last week with um a couple of other podcasts with united fans and they proceeded to tell me um that it villa had only ever won three times in in premier league history at, uh, against man united and i think it's something like uh obviously we, we won in 2009 um but yeah it, it wasn't a great record and it was almost like if that was a if that was a, a betting man it would just be an absolute banker but we we kind of were quite well i was certainly quietly confident going into the game uh, i thought it'd be much much i thought it'd be a lot more high scoring than it ended up being but i was certainly confident that we could go in and, and cause an upset and um and an, and an upset we caused um but yeah from your point of view lads and um, we'll start with the we'll start with the starting lineups um 
I don't think there was many surprises there, really, was there with Villa? Um, was there anyone that you may have started or may have changed? Or did, did you think that they were going to play a four across the bat, George? What, what were your thoughts on it? No, I thought the team picked itself, really. It was obvious um, uh, Hawes would come in for Axel. But yeah, after the last couple of performances, obviously the win against Everton, there was no reason to change anything. So um, yeah, it was pretty much as I thought. Yeah, yeah. And then United, Sam, um, it's just, obviously it's a fantastic team and, a, uh, you know, on paper and, and the strike force just sort of, you know, would strike fear in anybody. But w- w- was was there anything that you felt sort of encouraged by with the way that Villa were and anyone in that starting lineup for United that we could get at? Yeah, I mean, I think if you have a look at their midfield of, of Fred and McTominay, I was pretty confident that we'd out, outwork them. And, and, you know, the three of Jacob Ramsey, uh, John McGinn, Douglas Louise, I thought we were definitely going to have the better of the midfield. And and as we did against Chelsea and against Everton, just kind of nick that ball back a lot. But um, like you say, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not just a, a fantastic team, but it's also a bogey team. And I think, you know... Uh, the players will be aware of that and there will be like a you know you thought there would have been sort of like a, a mental stigma attached to um attached to beating man united but yeah obviously as you say didn't seem to be the case yeah yeah and obviously the start of the game um we we sort of went went at it from the start you know from being in the stands it was it was quite a lethargic start from united and i think it was kind of a one where they're sort of waiting for a mistake or waiting for um, one of their players to, to do something which kind of transpired throughout the whole game but certainly at the start it was quite subdued um, and Villa Villa sort of went went at it quite you know putting pressure on them quite quickly I, I, you know was that was that the impression that you got George in terms of the way Villa approached the start of the game as well? Yeah, I thought literally from the off we just showed them um, really good really good tempo and we were sort of first to everything first to the second balls winning the balls. I found McGinn was just, pick, I'm, I'm going to start calling John McGinn the pickpocket because he just <laughs> co- continually steals the ball from midfield and just sets us on our way. Um, we had two great chances, didn't we, with um, Target and Watkins. It's sort all of in the first 20 minutes. And um, yeah, I was a bit concerned when we missed those, thinking w- would we get a better chance? But obviously we all know uh, we all know what happened after that. Yeah, I mean, that was a fantastic move, wasn't it, Sam? The the one down, you know, down the the right-hand side first with McGinn and Cash linking up and then that ball goes across. And, and to be fair, Target, he has he has got to be scoring those, hasn't he? Yeah, 100%. I think it's it's sort of like very reminiscent of the um, of the Everton goal uh, for, for Matty Cash. And, um, you know, I think that was the ball that Douglas Louise was actually trying to play. Uh, to Matty Cash, uh, the one that John McGinn actually managed to pull off and set set him off, and you That's know, great ball. it's 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 a great ball, and 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 Matty Cash's ball again um, is is you know pretty much perfect. I thought sort of like on first glance of it, I thought there was a better ball on. I thought he could have just dragged it back to Ollie Watkins, who was in in absolute acres of space. And I think the only reason I say that is not because the ball to Matty Target was was a bad ball. You'd expect almost anyone to score from there, but but because it was to Matty Target. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if you had the chance to to give it to, you know, Matt Target or or Ollie Watkins to, to finish it, um, although it doesn't really seem that Ollie Watkins has got his shooting boots on this season, I think yeah. you still would have you still would have backed, you know, Ollie Watkins to, to, to bang that from from sort of like five, six yards. But um yeah, what a fantastic move. And and I think it's, you know, We've talked about the structure sort of like set piece wise and i'm sure we'll come on to that a little bit later but i think just a whole general play uh we seem like such a a well coached team and i think when you look at the contrast between villa and and man united they were you know a team of exceptional players um who were poorly coached and we're a team of, of very good players maybe not the same mm. quality but that are very 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 well coached exceptionally coached and um I think that was the difference on the day. And that's why, you know, I know what the stats say, uh, but I really feel like we dominated that game from the first yeah, minute. And definitely. that that chance that you mentioned there was just a, a drop in the ocean of how good we were on the day. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, what really impressed me was just how well we were set up, how well we were organised. 
you know, the way that we sort of shut off their sort of passing lanes to try and, you know, play through the midfield. And or if they did manage to do that, we hurried them um, with the likes of Fred and McTominay not getting not giving them any time on the ball. Um, and then that was sort of epitomised by that chance that Watkins had um, that you mentioned, George, um, where the ball goes down the line. I think it's uh, Ings maybe that, ch- that chases Maguire. He forces him into an overhit back pass to De Gea, and then it, and then Watkins is actually te- telegraphing what he's going to do, and he actually moves into that space. And again, you know, maybe a, a slightly more confident Ollie Watkins doesn't necessarily snatch at it too much, but in terms of the the play, it was it was it was brilliant at closing down, wasn't it, George? It was, mate. It was a great move, and um, yeah, as far as I think Watkins, even though he sort of he telegraphed, like you say, what was going to happen. When it did come to him, he just had a second where he just froze. And I thought um, De Gea actually done very well to smother it after that. But yeah, just for a second, you're waiting for the net to bulge. But no, it wasn't to be. Yeah, yeah. And then it boun- I think it bounces straight off Ings and then just, you know, then just sort of goes to safety. Yeah, but that, like you say, that was a real sign of things to come. And, and I think that gave the players real confidence, you know, continuing that half. I know United had one or two, one or two chances. Um, I think Mason Greenwood had had a, a couple of openings where he maybe could have chosen a different option and scuffed his pass. Um, but the, the half was kind of then, end, you know, reasonably end to end, but both teams sort of cancelling each other out. You know, I think we had a chance from a corner, which we will go on to more about set pieces later. Um, and obviously I'm mega impressed with the way that we're attacking the ball at the moment off set pieces. I think Konza headed it over and then, to be to to give them the Jews, United did have a couple of chances. I think Fernandez put a cross in, and and Maguire had a header that uh, Martinez saved, and then there was a corner right at the end that I that I did think was enough. Maybe inadvertently bounced off Pogba, Sam. But did anything else worry you with the first half, or was it was that kind of to be expected that United would get some chances? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, I think Mason Greenwood's chances that you mentioned, I think he should have scored them. They were almost as almost as big bankers as, as our ones as well. You know, he's 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 had a ball in, um, you know, kind of sat sat Mings down a little bit. He, he's obviously gone back onto his right onto his right foot, and we all know the kid doesn't have a weak foot at all. Um, so yeah, Man United had had their chances as well, but um, I think it was like you mentioned, it was a general play. Um, and and how much we restricted them and how much of the ball we had and um, yeah I think like you say it's 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 Man United but you know if you have a look at their biggest threats is what Ronaldo and he was uh, obviously I've seen the phrase I don't want to coin it too much but he was under house arrest because he had absolutely <laughs> he was getting absolutely nothing Courtney Hawes was uh, he he had him on toast and he he was really he, marshaled him so well there and i was quite surprised actually with 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 horses because he he did the same with lukaku as well um against yeah. chelsea in the, in the carabao cup and you know these are two of the best strikers in world football like let's you know have it right they are they are both exceptional footballers and and courtney horse is uh i think he's just kind of showing the player that he is and i think it's unfortunate that he's actually not not better on the ball and not better with the football because if he was he you know, could arguably be be our, our you know first or second choice centre back, but he's he, you know he kept them so quiet, and especially Ronaldo. You know, he was uh, he made Ronaldo look his age for the first time, and God knows how long. Yeah, That's absolutely. The scored in it, Ronaldo. Say again. Is that the first game Ronaldo's not scored this season? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like a, it sounds like a plausible stat. I yeah, mean, I, I think I, it is. I, I know that he's not scored against any team. In his career, more than he scored against Villa, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is which is fantastic news considering that he he spent the majority of his the majority of his career away from England. Um, but he, uh, yeah, he was kept really really quiet and uh, normally has a field day against us. So um, yeah, yeah, good. yeah. And uh, we actually got a few guys uh, viewing, which is fantastic. Please get your comments in. We'll read them through once you know if they're about the United game. We'll read them through after we've kind of finished our review. If they're about the Spurs game we'll we'll talk about them in the preview so please get your comments in please make sure you like the video and and please subscribe to the channel it's fantastic to have you guys supporting us um but yeah i mean being at the game um we went in the concourse nil nil at half time and i i i need to stop doing this but i'm still of that opinion you know like villa are going to sort of start that the next the second half slow 
and we need to, you know, it's inevitable that United are going to start fast and we're going to, you know, we're going to um, concede the early goal. But I don't know why I do that because that just didn't happen. Like we, we came out in that second half. I think I came out like maybe a couple of minutes late. Um, I was having a finishing off my pint. Um, and then we were, we had a corner um, and I was like, wow, this is, this, this isn't what I expected. I expected United to be absolutely uh, like tearing us one, like trying to get at us. But second half just didn't didn't happen like that for United, did it, George? No, we just like like the first half. I think we just got into them literally straight from the centre circle, and once again winning winning all the winning all the battles. Yeah, and yeah, so um, yeah, United. It took them a little while to get going again. Second half. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, Sam, we had that chance. I think it was. I don't know if it was like 60, 60 minutes ish, but um, you know, ball breaks, and it's, this is something that we were trying to do all game: is that quick little one-two passing in midfield. And I think it was Ings and Louise that linked up. Phenomenal ball by Louise, um, and uh, if Watkins maybe could have took it in his stride, he, he would have been clear through. But obviously, he cut inside, and, and it was a good save from De Gea. But you know, that was something that we were trying all game, and. Uh, you know, I don't know whether you were thinking at the time, you know, these chances can't keep coming by and, and, and squandering them. What, you know, we, what was your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, to, to, firstly, I, w- I will say to, to, I'm not surprised that it took you uh, longer than half time to finish your beer because you were drinking from seven in the morning. From that, so <laughs> I, I swear, so uh, you need to have a word with yourself when you're going on away days. For a start, which, but, um, but yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I, look, I've given... Douglas Luiz a lot of stick over the last sort of yeah, year and so. a half. I just don't think that he's been up to scratch. He's been there have been games where he's been woeful, and the ones where he's not woeful, he's being carried by better players in midfield. And and you know you can see he's got all the ability in the world, but he's been so frustrating um, for me. And if I'm being honest, I I, I kind of started venting some frustration against Matty Cash and I, I think I need to start being more vocal because as soon as I do, these players start turning up. They're listening um, to you. They're listening. Someone, I don't know, maybe it's Perslo. He heard me cursing them out or something. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think Douglas Louise, that ball to Ollie Watkins was was inch perfect. And I love the way it kind of didn't come from the outside. He he swung it round the defender and banked on Ollie Watkins' pace. And it was a perfect ball. And like you say, he, um, you know, he, he took a, a kind of a t- his first touch took him a bit wide. But to his credit, you know, I don't think that that kind of stopped the chance because he then, you know, proceeded to skip past two or three players and, you know, get a shot off on goal. And I think with Ollie Watkins, at you know, sometimes his his shot selection, you think about his footballing IQ, um, like especially the one that you mentioned, George, um, you know, he's, he's hit the first one on the ground, you know, and you just think, De Gea is already down anywhere yeah, but anywhere well. but lift lift the ball and it was the same in that scenario he didn't really pick a, a position he didn't place it he just went for power and it's right down to Gea's throw and it becomes an easy easy chance after all the hard work he's done but um yeah I think uh yeah like you say we had so many chances you know you mentioned Ezri Conser's one in the first half as well he should have been scoring that even though he's being pulled by one a little bit and yeah, I think there's so many chances against teams like Man United. And it's not just, you know, this isolated game. We've seen so many games where, where we've been the better team and we don't score and we don't, you know, subsequently we don't win. And I think that is, you know, that that's a big concern. But I don't know why I just felt on the day, I felt like we were going to get a goal right to the end. You know, I, we were just we were just such good value for it and, and making so many opportunities. Um yeah, and I was really happy to see Cameron Archer on because I actually thought he was going to be the one to get the goal. But, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, we're I, making uh, enough chances. Yeah, we were definitely. I did, I did get a little bit twitchy around sort of sixty-five minutes because United did start to kind of put a bit of pressure, and yeah, we I'll did get a little bit, a little bit ragged. And I was crying out for Ramsey to come off. Um, and Nakamba to come on and then maybe push Louise forward. But, you know, Smith stuck to his guns and the substitutions he made, George, were really attacking. You know, I know Sam's mentioned the Archer, but before that, Buendia came on and he he was involved in another phenomenal move where if where Ramsey, he, just, <laughs> he faked in the injury because he, he, just <laughs> lost it. It. he just lost his foot in and the guy just lost yeah. his foot in. But yeah, I mean, credit to Smith for sensing that we were going to win you know we had a chance of winning that game and, and making those attacking substitutions George yeah I mean many teams at that stage would have probably just tried to shut up shop and um 
try and make sure they got a point. But like you say, um, yeah, he's he's he thought we might as well go for it. There's nothing to lose. Um, yeah, like you say with Ramsey, um, that was that's twice now. I think he done the same against Chelsea the other day, didn't he? That he slipped over right at the uh, at the key moment. Yeah. But no, I'm, uh, it was nice to see Archer come on. It was a sign of intent, and um, yeah, come up trumps. Yeah, yeah, and he was on when we, when we scored, and that that yeah. pace, you know, chasing chasing people down, was always going to keep pressure on on the United defense. So you know, let let's let's get onto it. Let's not beat about the bush. We've we've <laughs> we've, we've 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 gone around the houses for too long. No pun intended. <laughs> um, we get a corner, eighty eighth minute, and uh, you know we've talked about these set pieces, and I think in his interview. Uh, Hall says that it was Tyro Mings that was going to make the front post run, but Mings said, "You do it." And it was it, it was kind of um, interesting that that um, Cavani was the man who was marking him, who's maybe not you know not long come on and wasn't sort of fresh. And Hawes gets the run on him and beautiful, perfect, perfect header. And uh, yeah, cue cue these scenes uh, in the away end because. Uh, it was uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely phenomenal. Um, but yeah, Sam, you know, I know you like to talk about your set pieces. So talk us through the goal and then uh, maybe you want to have a little word about Danny Murphy. <laughs> the only word, I've only got one word for Danny Murphy. And I'm not sure I could, you know, if, if I say it, we might have to censor the video a little bit. <laughs> but no, let, let, I mean, let's be honest, the guy's a prick because he, he doesn't, he, he, he said at the start of the season, you know, Villa, have got a set piece coaching and and oh why are they doing that and he's just been proven and the thing is you've seen him recently sticking to his guns about it because there are a couple of things about Villa right now that are drawing attention from everyone in the league the first thing is our our youth uh, players I've already seen um, you know supposed interest in in Jacob Ramsey from City so that should be another fun saga but the other thing as well as our set piece coach um, everyone is talking about it now. Um, you know, I, I've heard that there are other clubs in the league who are looking to bring in set piece coaches after the success of of, of Villas. And it, you can just—it's undeniable. It's not, you know, if if you have a look at, at how we were last year with set pieces, aimless, um, very little productivity, and now it seems to be a goal of the game. It seems to be a goal of the game that we're getting from set pieces at, at really integral times and I'm, I'm really glad that Tyra Mings kind of pushed um, pushed Courtney Hawes there because I think that Courtney Hawes is a better header of the ball than Tyra Mings not in the sense of I think in terms of clearing a ball Tyra Mings is you know yeah. almost unrivaled he's got a great header. defensive header yeah but I think when it comes to uh, attacking headers and you know placements and flick-ons and stuff like that I don't think you know Tyra Mings has the best a best awareness always about where he is spatial awareness towards the goal um and so courtney hawes is just like you say he's left cavani for dead at the front post um and there's a lot of you know there was a lot of talk about ollie watkins and you know whether he was obstructing um yeah. obstructing david de gea and the, the correlation between the leicester goal that was ruled out but i mean from from my opinion a de gea is never getting there uh to start with uh, and and secondly, I think by the time that the ball actually connects with Courtney Hawes, um, Ollie Watkins is kind of like out of the way. But I think it's one of those where depending on who you support, you have a different view on it. I'm pretty sure if that was against Emmy Martinez, um, you know, we'd all be saying he's touching him, he's standing in front of him. What are you doing? Yeah. I, I get the argument being like neutral and trying not to be too biased. I get it. But um, it's just it's a fantastic header. And we keep seeming to do that front post. And it's either to attack the ball to, for it to go in or to flick it onto someone in behind. And uh, yeah, we just seem to, you know, have endless amounts of creativity and and plans and, uh, you know, plays, like I said last week, playing from a playbook with set pieces. And it's, you know, it's so great to see. And, and Austin McPhee is, uh, as, soon as, as soon as we scored the goal, I tweeted, you know, surfer, surfer boy's done it again, um, you know, to, to <laughs> coin a phrase because, and, and I'll continue doing it because it, it really is the influence of the set piece coach. And I think for those who, who maybe watch the game on, on TV and definitely not through an illegal stream, they, um, you know, you could see Dean Smith and, uh, and Austin McPhee, um, you know, celebrating together and all the kudos was going towards Austin McPhee. And I really like that sort of, um, 
you know that kind of community within the coaches and dean smith is not you know sat there and and taking the credit no one's taking it's such a collaborative effort between the coaches and uh yeah i just there's there's no amount of of things i could say about how impressed i am with with all of the coaches but the set piece coach in particular and 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 again just how wrong danny murphy is yeah yeah absolutely and you know it's interesting because man united have actually got a set piece coach and uh they maybe could have done with the set piece coach pulling rank on who takes the penalties um for their <laughs> sake anyway uh yeah. george but like obviously a minute a minute after we score and you know we're we're just about in, we're in the crowd we've just about finished celebrating uh sort of i, a, I was a, still celebrating yeah and nothing and nothing <laughs> and nothing ball goes in the box and uh yeah, Cavani misses the header and it, it, it somehow hits Courtney Hawes on the arm and the hand and uh, it just stops for a bit. And then all of a sudden, um, they get a penalty. Um, what, do you boy, do you boys think it was a penalty? I, th- I think it's very, very harsh. Um, myself, I think he's obviously... He's, the only thing is, is like, you know, when they hit, when they hit, hit it from the cross that they're trying to block and they're like two steps away from them and they've got their arms down by the side. It never gets given anything on that is it's, it's come from a long way, but also he, the argument is he's kind of unsighted because Cavani's jumped up and the ball's literally gone over his head and then hit him on the hand, which is down by his side. It's the same as the, the same as our goal. You know, if it, if that had been the other way, we'd have been screaming for a penalty and complaining if, if it hadn't been given. So I can see why it's being given. That That's my thought. I don't know about you, George. Yeah, initially, obviously, I was fuming, like everyone probably was, you know, <laughs> Man United. We all said it was going to be a penalty and they've got yeah. it last minute. But looking at it a few times this week, yeah, I, it probably was, wasn't it? He's just, just, yeah. he'd just been caught there, caught napping for a second and it's hit his hand. But um, yeah, couldn't give a shit really now because obviously... He's got <laughs> <laughs> You've got to remember how many, how many people had their... Um, had their bets come in for yeah, Man United. Yeah. I mean, the inevitable Man United penalty against Aston Villa, you know, it was always going to happen. And, uh, you know, luckily the penalty was given, but they didn't score it. So everyone's a winner. Cause we, <laughs> we, yeah. Although, um, if your prediction was anything to go by last week, George, you, you, what did you say? It was going to be 3-0 to United, didn't you? 3-0 United, about, he said. I'm, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I said we were going to win comfortably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> roll it, roll it back, roll it back. Yeah, I've got a bit of amnesia. We can't we can't go on from this part. Like obviously we'll talk about some players that impressed us. Um but we can't move on from this without talk about the Emmy Martinez show right at the right right oh, at the end. Man. I mean <laughs> can I say the shit was yeah, phenomenal, wasn't it? And uh you know, I don't know whether I don't know whether Fernand, uh, Fernandez would have missed or not if he hadn't have done it, but it's a great story to say you know him. Ta- him telling Ronaldo, "Why don't you take the penalty? Why don't you take the penalty?" You know, must have must have got in his head because he he didn't do that stutter. He just ran up to it and s- smashed it, and then this is this happens as a result. So, yeah, Sam, what 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 do you think about Ma- the Martinez show? I mean, I, the guy, the guy. Oh yeah, it's. it's you run out of superlatives for Emi Martinez because he's just he's just everything, you know. Um, I, I I would like to say I don't think it was just Shahazri. I don't think he was just winding him up to wind him up, you know, for the sake of it. What he's done is is he's it's so smart actually. He's isolated a, a, a you know um, a confrontation within that side of who's going to take it, and I'm sure it's something that he would have isolated before the game even started because there were questions: who's going to who's going to take the penalty? Is it going to be Ronaldo? Or is it going to be Fernandez? And as soon as if, I guarantee you, if Ronaldo had picked up the ball, he'd have gone straight to Fernandez and said, yeah. "Why don't you take the penalty?" What he's done is he's trying to add pressure to an already pressurized yeah. situation. It's not random. He's not just going up and giving it, you know. Jimmy Big Balls. He's really, th- he knows what he's doing. He did the same against uh, Yeri Mina in the in the Copa America. Yeah. Um. And, you know, and that ended up. For, I, I heard the story. I'm not 100 sure if it's true, but I heard that he actually wrote Yeri Mina a, an apology letter for what he said to him, um, during the Copa America because he really said like some things he wouldn't very out of character for him just to wind him up, put the pressure on him, and it works. And you know, you talk about sportsmanship in football, and and of course there is an element of that, but but 
you know, he didn't say anything that was insulting. You know, he's not talking about anyone's family or, you know, yeah. insulting them personally. He's asked a very valid question. He said, come on, big man, take the penalty. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and Ronaldo, Ronaldo didn't want it. And obviously Bruno Fernandes didn't want it. But Emi Martinez is, you, you know, he, he's such a beacon of confidence for that defence, you know, defence that has historically, just talking about Villa in general, been so shaky. And, uh yeah, he's impossible not to love. It's not enough for him to put off the, uh, uh, you know, to put off off Bruno Fernandes in penalty. He turns around and starts giving it a bit of salsa to to oh, the strike for it as well. And he's, you know, it's like like I was saying about Courtney Hawes. He, you know, he had Ronaldo in his pocket, and and Emmy Martinez had everyone in his pocket. Uh, yeah, you know, including the Villa fans. He, he's just he's just such a charismatic person and it, and it's not just for show it really influences the way he plays the way we play and luckily now the way that the opponent plays because i think if you've seen bruno fernandez's stats he does not miss penalties no nah. one in nah. one in 25 26 whatever so yeah long live on emmy martinez and uh, uh you know everyone needs to take take a little look and, and learn off what he's doing yeah definitely definitely we've had a little comment here from um Baz from the World of Sport TV. Top stuff, lads. Amazing result at Old Trafford. Man United won't be challenging for the title this year. Um, is it, you know, is that something that you you think? Like, I, I mean, I, I'm certainly of that opinion. I think United, they've, they've got all the players. They've got all the players, but they're just, it, it, it's very, as I said before, it's very much like a Steve Bruce with Villa situation. When we were in the championship, we had all the biggest budget. We had all the, all the players. We had Tammy Abraham. We had Kodja. We had Grealish. We had Yannick Balassi. We had all these players. But <laughs> We had Steve Bruce. <laughs> but we had Steve Bruce. And now you've got Ronaldo, yeah. Sancho, yeah, yeah. Fernandez, Pogba, and they've got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. It's like, they've got, they're just, he's just throwing them out and saying, put your boots on, lads. Roll your sleeves up. One of you will do something for us. Go out and enjoy yourself. They won't do anything with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. In my opinion, he's not a coach per se. He was a decent man manager. I think what he does is he picks a starting eleven, then he kind of goes out and and he depends on individual brilliance to win games. Um, you know, they like I said right at the start, it was it was a team of superstars versus a very well coached team, and I think you can see a bit of organisation will take you on the right day further than talent and look, let's be honest man united are going to going to finish above us just because of the talent they've got and sometimes yeah. you can't supersede it but um you know because they're not going to come up against well organized teams every week and that talent will get them through against uh, you know certain games but um i think look if they got rid of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer tomorrow and you swapped them with you know you swapped them with like Thomas Tuchel or someone else then yes they, they are they are pre- contenders because they've got the best arguably the best 11 yeah. Um, on 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 the pitch and um, you know in the Premier League, so y- yeah, it is plausible. And I, I, I personally, I can't see how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to stay there any longer. Um, I don't know why he's still in the role, but you that down on him, Sam. Yeah, I mean, I just I, there's no evidence to suggest that he's that he's any better than that. I think, like if you, like Rich says, he's got one of the most expensively assembled teams in in history. He's got, you know, a team with Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, Jaden Sancho, Paul Pogba, Bruno Fernandes. I mean, you're talking about some of the best players in the world, like w- without a doubt. And it, it's not just that they lost to Villa. That's fine. You can lose to anyone on any given day. I think the problem is, is how how badly they took the loss and how much we dominated and and how you could tell the lack of organisation. Um, from both of them, I think they were very lucky as well to to have ten ten men on the pitch because I don't know if you guys caught it, but there was uh, an incident where uh, you know the, the ball comes to John McGinney, heads yeah, it past the wire. Oh yeah, he, he, he didn't even give a foul. Didn't no, even it give wasn't a even a foul. But uh, again, you know, it helps having the refs on the books as well. But you know, <laughs> I, I guess that one, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did, and I think you know, I think that's what it what it is. They've they've got a lot of things to their benefit and. You know they do have the big time big team bias to, to help them but um I, I mean if they were going to win something with with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer they would have won it I don't think yeah they, yeah I, I, I don't think um I don't think they'll win it but I think I'll, I'll give them a little bit more credit than what Sam says I mean you've got to think they went the whole of last season unbeaten away from home which is an incredible feat yeah um, and they and he's got Solskjaer's got a very good record against the top managers it's just it's the, the games like I suppose the likes of us 
where yeah, they tend to slip up. But yeah, you know, it's, that, it's the home form. Yeah. Last year. Yeah, it's the home form that's they've struggled, but yeah. enough, enough about them. Enough about yeah, them. Okay. So you said <laughs> you said George, um, and oh, sorry, Sam said that you know they were a team of individuals. We were a well coached te- team, um, of very good players. So onto that, George, who who really impressed you um, in that game? Before I get your console energy energizer of the week nomination, who who really impressed you from from the Villa team on on Saturday? Yeah, well, I was um, I was making notes as the game went on. Um, sorry, during the game, and I had Cash as the man of the match first half. Just thought he was he just played very very well, just so sort of quick and lively, and just sort of um, just eager really, like set the tempo again, like I was saying, just um, sort of winning all these winning all these battles. Uh, I thought Courtney Hawes was superb all game, and got his just desserts right at the end. Um, yeah, there was a number of good performances really. I mean, it has to be if you're going to win at Old Trafford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think that was the feeling coming away from the game. It was like, it's it, everybody was an eight or nine out of ten. It was Louise so hard. Was, sorry, I thought Douglas Louise was very good. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody was an eight or nine out of ten. It was very hard, very hard to sort of single out anyone who was unbelievable. But Sam was a, was a. Would you agree with George, or was there was there anyone else again that caught your eye? I think McGinn was was excellent. I really like. I really thought McGinn had one of his better games, and and we've seen it. We've seen it recently. You know the kind of resurgence of John McGinn, and you know I think we, we all remember John McGinn at his best, and he was unplayable, and then he was crap for a bit, and I couldn't tell you why. I don't know if it's because he played too many games, he was rushed back from an injury, but he injury, looks, yeah, he, yeah, he 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 looks, he, you know, he looks back to his back to his best and back to his old self, and you know. I think just kind of, although it's such an amazing result, you can't fault anyone for anything. Um, you know, I really, really want to highlight just how good a player Danny Ings is. Again, Danny Ings is, is, geez, I just keep forgetting how good a footballer he is and how skillful he is with his feet and, and how quick he is as well. I didn't realise that until the Man United game. But the, I would say there was, there was someone who actually concerned me, like just to go the other way, even though it was such a great result. And, and like I say, there's there's no qualms. But I think it was the first time I ever watched Ollie Watkins and I was I found myself kind of frustrated with him and I, I wanted him to come off because he was, you know, missing chances. He, uh, you know, was he, he was misplacing passes. He was not collecting the ball well. Um, he seemed frustrated. And I don't know if, you know, his first season where he was just the main man up front you know, and now having to share areas of the pitch with Danny Ings, whether that's affecting him or, or needs what. Needs a goal, doesn't he? Yeah, I was going to say, he, I think it's more like he, need, no, not, he needs a goal. He needs a goal, but I think like, um, although there definitely wasn't a lack of effort, there never is with, with Ollie Watkins. I feel like he wasn't concentrating. He wasn't like quite there. And I think, you know, I don't know if it would have been beneficial to to take him off and, and you know, because he took off Ings, so mm. and I, who I thought was having a better game. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I just I would really really like Farley Watkins to get a, a goal as soon as possible, and you know start building up his form because we're going to need him this season if we're going to do anything. You we can't keep relying on um, you know midfielders and, and wingers etc. to to be scoring goals. So yeah, I'm really excited to see him get going and not his best game if I'm being honest. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I mean, from being from at the game, I thought. I actually thought he was he was he was hounding them down. He was playing pretty well. I, I I thought I thought Ings was the right person to take off at that time. I just felt like he just slightly ran out of steam. Um, and obviously, as I said before that, um, I was calling for Ramsey to come off uh, as well and Nick Hamber to come on. But obviously, he brought Brendia on. Um, so he brought Brendia on for Ings, didn't he? And then Ramsey off yeah. for uh, for Archer. But I was actually thinking it, he would have done it the other way around because I thought Ramsey was flagging a little bit more before that but yeah I mean he, he got everything right and um, Ramsey worked hard and he works well in that in that kind of system but he was probably the quieter one out of the three midfielders um, but yeah. you, you, you can't lack it you know you can't call out anyone for effort I did post a comment here from Mark just agreeing with your um, point uh, Sam about uh, uh, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer being the weak link and uh you know, maybe maybe not quite there for challenging City and Liverpool, but obviously we'll we'll um we'll see as the season goes on. I still think Chelsea are a shout myself, but you know we'll we'll see as the season goes on. But um, who gets your 
console energy energy energizer of the week george go uh, you I'll, first yeah i've got to go for the uh, the pickpocket john mcginn i just thought he was fantastic his energy is something else and he just he just looks fresh as a daisy this season this looks fitter quicker more like quicker in the brain as well just winning everything and he's setting the tempo for everyone else it's just yeah it looks a class class player at the moment and i'm loving it brilliant brilliant and sam yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go courtney horse uh you know winning goal ronaldo ronaldo in the pocket and uh i really like what he said after the game he was you know he's being interviewed and about obviously what it felt like to beat man united and he just went well you know hold on we're aston villa we can give anyone a game and uh i really like that and it's not it's not clearly something that he genuinely believes because he played like it as well and i think all the players are playing with no fear at the moment so you could have picked any of those players even ollie watkins and, and i would have i would have fully agreed with it because i think it's the way that they're playing and the, and the attitude and the, the energy they're playing with like george said about mcginn that is is really great to see and we can play like that you know 10 times out of 10 and even if we lose i'll still be happy because we're playing proper football and, and we're playing with with everything we've got so no complaints from me but yeah courtney horse well i am gonna agree with you sam partly because i've got a picture of him but <laughs> <laughs> but, but partly but more more so that yeah you know he was just he was just colossal and you know and you put someone against cristiano at the start of the game Courtney Hall's coming in for Axel Twenze, being you think he's going to be in for a tough time, but he absolutely pocketed him. And then to not only that, he scores a goal and, you know, obviously Martinez gets him out of jail a little bit at the end, but just phenomenal. And, and I, I, I'm glad you brought up his interview because, you know, he had, he said, you know, I'm not here to make the numbers up. I'm not here to be a squad player. I'm here to be in the first team. And that's fan, phenomenal to see it, uh, to hear. And, um, yeah, you know, he's given Smith a headache because he want he's he's put himself right in there. Um, you think he takes Twanzebi's place? Well, you know, I think it's harsh on Twanzebi because he had a he had a very good game against Everton. It's not necessarily his fault that he can't play against United, but Courtney <laughs> Hawes hasn't. You know, if there's if there's something that if you can do everything you can do to put yourself in the starting lineup for the next game, then it's to to pocket the best player, well, arguably the best player in the world, and to score in the, the winning goal in a game when you've only won, I don't know, once in like 80 years or something. So, <laughs> you know, I don't I wouldn't yeah. like to be Dean Smith tomorrow or Friday when he's getting the players in for, in his office saying, I'm sorry, Courtney, mate, but yeah, I'm going to go with Axel today. It's like, boss, <laughs> like, what more do you want me to do to get in this yeah. team? So, yeah, I think. It's, yeah, I think you'll have a very clear distinction, though. I think Courtney Hawes is a better defender. He's a, he's, yeah. he's just a better defender than Axel Twanzebi. Twanzebi's a better a better sort of player of the ball. Um, you know, I think just a better foot, footballer in general. He'll get the ball out, and, and, you know, you can kind of trust him. There were little pieces of play. I don't know if you remember them. Um, it was Ollie Watkins and Courtney Hawes playing on the edge of the box, like quite, yeah, quite yeah. towards the game. Like, yeah. Courtney Hawes just he couldn't play like a like a a, a five yard pass. Like just get, we, we, we keep were just happy ground. that he kept. We were just happy that he he, he passed it. He didn't yeah, the ball yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, just... but, but he struggled. Like he was not. He was not getting the. He's yeah, not he was a like, ball I shouldn't be in like this that. area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. He's he's not he's not a ball player the way that Twanzebi you know, would have probably rainbow flicked it over a couple of players because he used to be a midfielder as well. So Trans yeah. has got much better command of the ball. And, you know, this is why I love Ezra Concer because he's a mix of both of them. Yeah. He's better on the ball than Trans and he's a better defender than, than Courtney Hawes. Yeah. So that's why he's the perfect defender. But um, yeah, I, I feel for Courtney Hawes. And I, I said kind of like at the top of the show, I really, really wish, like, I really wish he was a better footballer. He was, had a better c command of the ball because he would be, it would be a no-brainer if he could play with a ball like Twanzebi did. There would be no question and he would be in the, in the starting lineup, maybe even above Ming. So, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it's we'll a tough one. We'll, we'll see. We'll, George, well, what were we, you, because we didn't get George's opinion on Twanzebi versus Hawes. Uh, yeah, um, you, I think Hawes has got to keep his place after the performance that he had on Saturday and also the performance at Chelsea in the Cup. I mean, it sends out a poor message to the players on the bench if he doesn't carry on, even if it's only the next game or the one after. I'm sure Twanzebi will get back in, but yeah, Hawes should play against Tottenham for me. Yeah, yeah. fair. That's fair. Well, 
good segue into the Tottenham game. Um, as we've got, we've had some really good comments, guys. So please, if you're liking the video, make sure you like. Please comment. We'll read them out. Do you agree with our um, man of the match in Courtney Hawes, or do you agree with George or John McGinn, or was is there anyone else that you think? And you know, moving on to the Spurs game, we had a question from Shaz. Um, uh, saying with Spurs desperate for a result and more importantly a big performance to bounce back from that awful display on the weekend what's the general feeling from us for the game on Sunday who's gonna who wants to take that one first I'll go if you want. Yeah, on yeah, I'll, yeah I mean I'll I'll have a pop at it because uh um, I do actually, I do actually know Shaz. He's, uh, he's 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 one of my best mates, and he is a Spurs fan. And I did actually watch the uh, watch the Spurs Arsenal game with him at the weekend, and uh, <laughs> I, I felt bad. I honestly felt bad for him. Like at one point, I was I was saying to him, "Don't worry, mate. You'll you know you might beat us." And I was really uh, really willing him to, <laughs> to win. But he's he's absolutely right. Spurs are desperate for a uh, for a win. They're in dire straits at the moment, and I think he. Um, you know, I think from Villa's perspective, they're there to be had, and I, I would be surprised if we don't throw absolutely everything that we've got at them. Um, you know, Kane seems disinterested. Um, Son looks like they're they real beacon of light. Him and Lucas Moura are both fantastic players and both, you know, really keeping up. But I just think that they, you know, I think they find kind of lack direction at the moment. They're very very ne- negative with with Nuno. Um, it's strange to think that they were, you know, they were top of the league, and then, you know, it's obviously come come crashing down so soon for Spurs. When I mean, we expect them to to fall down the table, but not not this quickly. And um, yeah, I think I think it's a really tough time for Spurs, and it's definitely a, a moment in their, you know, in their journey we need to capitalise on. Um, but it would be interesting to see the response for them because another performance like they've had at Arsenal was it three three nil results on. Uh, in a row for them there's only so long that Spurs fans are gonna sort of keep up with that and I just I wouldn't be surprised to see a massive backlash from them against us yeah George do you similar feeling or do you do you fear the wounded animal that's gonna bite Villa in the backside on Sunday there's always a chance of that and um Harry Kane another one who always scores against us don't get me wrong he probably scores against most teams but he does (laughs) get a lot of goals against Villa but I think um Spurs are in a massive sulk at the moment and it's, it's got to be a good time to go there, hasn't it? You've just got to get in there, try and get an early goal, upset the crowd, get them on Nuno's back. A bit more shithousery from Emmy and a few of the others. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, um, yeah, I think, I think we could get something out of this game, most definitely. And um, I'll stick with you, George. Do you think, obviously, we've, we've had a big conversation there about Hawes and Twanzebe and, and, you know, looking like Hawes, well, we we think Hawes should definitely deserve to keep his place. But is there any other changes you'd make? Um, I don't think there's there's not been any reports of any injuries. Um, and obviously, Leon Bailey is not going to be back till after the international break. Santon's not going to be back. But are there any other changes that you would make? No, well, I don't suppose you can really after the um, couple of results we've just had. I mean, I know you have Wendia sat on the bench and he's going to be, I'm sure he's starting to get irritated about his lack of football. But he can't have any complaints. We've we've changed the system, and it seems to have worked so far. So you you, you carry on, don't you? I think you've got to stick with it while it's working. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I w- <clears throat> the only one I might say is maybe, you know, Ramsey's had a lot of game time, a lot of games. Is is there a call to maybe, you know, take take him out, give him a little rest, and maybe bring Buendia in? You know, maybe hungry, wanting to cause an impression. Sam, is that something that you might consider? Uh, possibly. I mean, I don't think in that, in that, like the middle of the three, I don't think that's when Deer's natural position. And uh, I'm of the yeah. opinion that if, if Jacob Ramsey's fit and Dean Smith reckons that he can play, he can play, you know, he's, he's 19, was he 19, 20 years old? He physically he should be fine to carry on when we are really only at the like fifth, sixth game of the season. He's, you know, if he's getting gassed out already, it's not a great sign for, for, for Villa considering, you know, he, He's had a, had a couple of breaks as well, but I no, think I, I, Sam. Sam, sorry, jump in there. Do you reckon? I think he makes um, Louise and McGinn better since he's yeah. come into the team. Both of them two have gone up a notch. Well, we, we mentioned it last week. It's what it's the difference between the way he plays and the way they play. You know, John McGinn is is very good at you know, like you say, pick 
pickpocketing the ball and um douglas louise always you know wants to play that pass and jacob ramsey receives the ball turns and drives through the lines you know they all perform a different function and i think you said at the start well i say the start at one of our earlier podcasts george you know if you get all three of them into one play you've got the perfect midfielder and and, and, you know i think that's what you know what we're trying to get the balance for but the only the only one that i would think of is possibly taking out matty target for ashley young um i I really like matt target i don't even think he had a bad game against man united but sort of another glaringly obvious you know miss and and possibly mistake for matt target and i just i wonder how long he can keep ashley young out of the team if he's not because ashley young would have would have put that away i think we all know that and um you know and he's he's a great crosser of the ball and at the moment matt matt target is being asked to cross the ball a lot and i think he's still kind of struggling to get past that first man so um yeah I, I, the only one that i would i could envision is Ashley Young to, to come in for target, but I don't think he'll make any changes because we just beat Man United for the yeah. first time in a gajillion years, like you say. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's absolutely fair enough. So Spurs wise, you know, we've we've just had a little touch on them in terms of, you know, being a little bit um disjointed. Obviously won their first three, but one nil and then um through more so organization and and, and a breakaway goal or breakaway goals and then they've kind of had conceded is it three goals in the last in the last three league in each of the last three league games so that yeah. you know they they're struggling to find that that way of playing and that that can sometimes happen with new managers and, and what have you so I, you know I think they certainly give Nuno some more time but I know there was a fair few Spurs fans on Talksport and and the like saying he's not the right fit he needs to go now let's just cut ties now it, it's done but They've still got good players, you know. Harry Kane, Son, um, Deli Ali yeah. can play, yeah, and Dombele can play. So, is it is it those players that can potentially hurt us, George? I know you mentioned Harry Kane generally scores about us, but you know we we really got to be watching out for Son as well and and the likes of Deli Ali. I absolutely love Son. I think if there's one player I could have off any other team, he'd be well high up on the list. Just busy as busy as you like. Great, great yeah. little player, son. No, as you say, I mean, they, they won their first three games, so it's not as if they're um, cannon fodder, is it, by any means? No. They've got good players. They're just in a bit of a malaise as a club at the moment. You know, that they've, Undem, Undembele, what, 65 million? Yeah. yeah. That's a huge outlay, and I don't think things have really worked out for him there so far. Let's so hope it doesn't start, um, start on but Sunday. He, he scored against us, didn't he, in the first game of us back in the, in yeah. the, uh, in the Premier League, and he, you know, it looked like he was going to go on and uh, go on from there, but just hasn't worked out for him. And, you know, Tottenham have been on a hell of a journey since that game. Um, but yes, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they have got players to, to be mindful of, certainly, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I live in, in North London. I, I moved here when I was when I was quite young. All, all my mates are either Spurs fans or Arsenal fans. And, you know, my, my mum's house is, is less than five minutes away from the uh, Spurs training ground. So it's like... You know, it, it's I've seen a lot of Spurs, and and you know I watch them, I watch them quite regularly with with my mates and stuff. And they've got you cannot underestimate the ability they've got in that team. You know, even players that you you probably wouldn't look out for. For me, my pick of the bunch is is Oliver Skip, and I think if he plays, that's going to be that's going to be bad news for Villa because he's so energetic in the middle. He he wins the ball back so well. Um, I'm completely with George. If there was only one player I could take from you know any other team, some would be well up on that list. Harry Kane is he's just dangerous. He doesn't look he doesn't look at it, but they don't have any alternatives. So it's not even like we can kind of hope he gets dropped for like a Dane Scarlet or someone like that. And uh, they've got quality all over the pitch, um, except for at left back. Their left backs are awful. <laughs> yeah. um, I think they're you know they're 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 a really good team, and you know Tottenham are. Ha- it, it's really funny because, like I say, growing up in North London at the time, it was a battle with Spurs, Everton, and Villa. Um, to break into that top four and break into Europe, and so we're always really close. And and I've always said, you know, we, both clubs could have gone one of two ways, and Spurs went that way, and we went yeah. we went down, yeah. and, and we were exactly in the identical place, very similar clubs, um, you know, and and they they sort of just had a better run of it, and I think now they're on their on a steadier decline. Um, I just don't think their clubs being taken care of. Personally, I would have sold Kane in the summer. Uh, someone who just clearly doesn't want to be there. They could have got so much money for him. 
um, and they could have really rebuilt that team around getting rid of Kane, but they just didn't do it, and I think they're paying for it now. They yeah, well, a lot of a lot of the today, yeah, well, a lot of the talk has been that uh, I'll go to you, George, but a lot of the talk has been that you know Villa did the right thing in terms of biting the bullet and and get and selling Grealish for the money that they did, and then replacing him with you know three big players, and then obviously Ashley Young and Axel Twanzebe coming in, but. We now look a stronger squad. Tottenham didn't do that. And it's potentially, I mean, we're saying that before Sunday, they could go out and batter us. But we're saying that before Sunday, but potentially it looks like it could backfire because they've got an, un, an unhappy player in Harry Kane at the moment. And they've got, looks like a, a disjointed squad without, with, with great players, as we've mentioned, but not necessarily the options that they might have had if they'd have sold, them, sold him, George. No, that's right. Um, obviously, no club's going to want to sell a player as good as Harry Kane. But once once a player's come out and said they want to go, where do, where do you really go from there? It, all, all the teammates know he wants out. The fans know he wants out. It's um, It just sets a bad energy, I think, for the club. I just think mm-hmm. Levy has not sold him. One, because he's a, you know, he's a, Tough, tough negotiator. But I don't think... Yeah, well held. Like that. <laughs> well held. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also, I don't think he, he trusts whoever's spending the money to spend it right because they've, they've got history of, of wasting money. You know, that's still, a, that, yeah. all that money they wasted from Gareth Bale. Not one of yeah. the players really come through that they spent all the big money on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that they, they do have trouble. And if you look at their, their best players... Um, the ones that you've already mentioned, Harry Kane, um, Deli Ali, uh, Tanganga, um, even players like Hugo Lloris, Christian Eriksen, Jan Vertonghen, when they brought them in, those weren't like their big, massive, high-profile high signings. Right. Like in terms of name, possibly they were, but they weren't bought from for, for a lot of money. And then you you look at you know the players that they have had a, a big outlay on, and they just haven't performed that well. I, but I think Harry Kane is is as good as, if not their captain i know hugo Lloris is actually the captain but you know he's such an influential figure in that in that squad and if he's unsettled everyone's unsettled it's just um it, it's so much more than just a player not being happy and it, it's kind of toxic and and you don't no fan club knows more about um tox, toxic atmospheres and what that can do to a football club than Villa because we, we yeah. you know, it really, really hit us hard. So I, I actually kind of feel for Spurs at the moment because they're re- they're kind of like a really good outfit. The stadium is amazing. I, I'm actually going to be going to the game and um, I'll be hiding away amongst the Spurs fans because I can't get any away tickets. Um, but yeah, you know, they've got a fantastic stadium, some of the best players in the world, but they just can't link it up. And I think it's quite um, telling that um, just very quickly they had one of the, the managers that they were going to bring in because I think everyone knows at the start of the, the season they were struggling to even get a manager in they went through like 10 10 you know 10 people before they managed to get one in but there was one who was sort of pretty much signed on a dotted line and uh, he the story from, from the Spurs fans that I've been told is that he was ready you know planned out his first training session but Daniel Levy kind of s- retracted the offer for him to be the manager because he didn't want to play um, to attacking football, he thought it was too risky, and so he went with Nuno, uh, who who plays a, a sort of safer brand of football, and that's just it's just not the right way to go about it. And I think you know you can see that from from Spurs and the way that they played the last few games that negativity and you know holding back just doesn't suit their players. And should, you know, should never have sacked Pochettino in a million years. That's where they started going wrong. Yeah, hundred percent. But yeah. I, I, I'm hoping we could take advantage of that. And yeah. I, I, for the first time in a long time, I really expect Villa to win and beat beat Spurs. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, with predictions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to you first, seeing as you're so confident, Sam. So, what yeah, are you we saying? Wanna, George is going to do a four nil to Spurs. Now, so we'll, we'll start <laughs> off on the. Oh yeah, that will bring us down. I have to like level us. Yeah, again, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. If you ask George, we're getting relegated. So uh, we'll, we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go. No, I, th- I think it's going to be. A, I think it's going to be. A, 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 you know, like not that close a game. If I'm being honest, I think we're going to win three-one. Uh, um, wow. And I, and I think Ollie Watkins is is going to get his goal. And uh, uh, yeah, I think Jacob Ramsey is going to get his first goal as well. Um, so yeah, that's my prediction. I just think that they're there to be had, and and Villa are looking more like the hunters and poachers that we need to be. And I think we should take advantage of it. Brilliant, brilliant. Come on then, George. Are you going to be positive? 
Um, I think in this game, um, the first goal is going to be crucial. If they get it and get their tails up, we could be in trouble. But if we get it, I think there's only one winner because, like I said earlier, because the crowd's going to get on the players and get on the manager, sets yeah. a bad tone all over the pitch. Um, yeah, so do you know what? 2 1 Villa, I'm going to back us to win this week. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to make it a full house. And I'll say two nil. I don't. I don't. I think we'll shut them out again. I think we'll get a third clean sheet in a row in the league. That'll be. Yeah. So yeah, I think that that'll be us. Um, two nil. I'm going to say Ings and Watkins. The uh, the partnership will bear fruit on the weekend, and that'll take us into the international break with a, a oh, dream. One. <laughs> yeah, I know an absolute dream scenario. Um. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I could imagine nine points from twelve out of um, who have we had? Chelsea. Everton. It'd be ten, wouldn't it? Yep. No, nine. Yeah, Ch- yeah. Nine. Chelsea, Everton, Ars- uh, Chelsea, Everton, uh, Man, United, Man United, and Tottenham. Chelsea, That'll be yeah. just incredible. So, yeah, phenomenal. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments, uh, guys. What you think the score is going to be? Give us a shout. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, and thanks for the comments from the supporters, Spurs, Villa so far. It's been really, really appreciated. Make sure you're liking the video uh, and please, again, make sure you subscribe into the channel, um, World of Sport TV. As I said at the start, some great content on there, all different teams, Villa, Arsenal, West Ham, uh, Newcastle, and then different sports. We've got golf. We've got uh, MMA. There's also championship roundup shows. There's Premier League roundup shows. So loads of stuff. We're almost at 600. So if we could get to 600 subscribers, that would be fantastic. And then well on the way to 1,000, which would be which would be brilliant. Once again, lads, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Enjoyed it again. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm getting used to this. I'm kind of planning it into my weekly. I'm like, we can't go shopping on Wednesday. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. And then your wife yeah. goes, all you ever do is podcast. All you ever do is podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what generally happens to me. But yeah, what what's better than talking about football, eh? I mean, it's, it's, she's just happy I'm not talking to her about it. She just doesn't care, but she's uh, <laughs> she, she, she's an Arsenal fan and we've we've got tickets to go to the Villa Arsenal in a couple of weeks after the international break as well. So looking forward to that. It's all it's all Villa at the moment. And uh, yeah, long, long way to continue. Yeah, if you can't if you can't enjoy it this week, you never will. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and your your match, Shaz. There we are. Great show, lads. Brilliant, brilliant preview. Let's hope the three of us are wrong. 2-0 Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. I mean, he, he, he can't go against his team, can he? Even though oh, you've got to let him dream. You've got to let him yeah. dream. <laughs> <laughs> Watch us get battered now. We've been way too confident. I know. We can see it in George's eyes. Yeah, yeah I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, not, I'm not. I'm not saying anything. I'm not yeah. saying anything. But yeah, guys, thanks so much for your support. Thanks so much for watching. Um, and uh, yeah, let's hope for three points on Saturday and up the villa. <laughs>